All right, we have more changes unfolding in the U.S. economy and the U.S. real estate market. Changes that have both Wall Street and Main Street now bracing for tighter lending standards as, as company after company, project after project continue to default. I mean, we already have double the number of corporate bankruptcies this year compared to all of last year when you extend out the full year, not to mention all the defaults with commercial real estate that we've been seeing every single day. It seems like another mega project fails to meet its loan obligations, but something changed last week. A shift in where the big money is moving just happened this past week after after the Fed raised the overnight rate again, which by the way, is the first time that they ever did that. The first time that they ever raised rates after pausing during a hiking campaign. And it's a turning point in the economic cycle. All this talk about a soft landing, everyone pushing their soft landing predictions out to 2024. Well, they may end up being very surprised with what's in store for the rest of the year. But before we get started, if you're not already a subscriber of this channel, consider subscribing. It helps the channel out and I appreciate your support. Also, this video today is brought to you by Snapforce CRM. If your small business wants to streamline your operations, increase sales, reporting, etc., have all your client communications, including your phone calls, your emails, text messages, notes, files, tasks, meetings, etc., all centrally located, I recommend trying our product. I put the link in the description below. You can connect with one of our account specialists to get a full demonstration of the software. All right, so about six months ago, I really started or tried to start hammering home the point about tighter lending standards. I said then, in the second half of this year, we're gonna start to hear a lot more about this, that, that the financial media will begin covering this on the regular and that the real present danger that it causes to real estate, business, the economy overall, really to just about anyone and everyone who borrows money from the typical credit card borrower to your Fortune 500 company with tens of billions in corporate debt because what's happening right now and been happening really for the whole year is the secret weapon that the Federal Reserve is using, tightening credit standards, meaning making it harder to get a loan, right? Putting the banks, the lenders in a position where they have to limit the amount of lending that they do, making it harder to get a loan. And the effects are blaring. Unfortunately, this topic is just severely underreported. You'll hear about the surge in bankruptcies and the defaults, but they seem to just skim right over why it's happening, why so many companies are failing, being forced into filing Chapter 11, making it seem like a corporate-only problem, but not explaining how it affects everyone, the real fundamental issue here, you know, and just leaving all of us walking in the dark, essentially. Well, well next week, not this coming week, but the week after, we're going to get our hands on the next SLUS report, the Senior Loan Officer Survey for Q2. <clears throat> the single most important survey that, that the Fed does and what they were waiting for, the main reason that they waited to hike last meeting, the real reason for the pause that we saw. This whole topic is severely underreported, folks. Here's San Francisco Fed President Mary Daly explain this in her own words. Take a listen. Look at lending standards. They've been, Sluice. Yes, SLUS. Senior the, Loan Officer survey. survey. Senior Loan Given Officer Ackerman. Survey. So at this juncture, here's, what I, here's my uh, sense of things. If you look at history, it takes a while. Banking credit shocks have a little bit of a they have a lag. So I don't think we can declare there is no credit shock from the banking stresses. I think we still could see it coming in the next you know number of months. So I, I have an open mind about what that's going to be, and it's another reason I was very supportive of standing pat in June and waiting for more data to come out. Now here's the last SLUS report for Q1. All right, this is straight from the Fed's website, and it's released quarterly, by the way. And compared to pre-pandemic levels, I mean, look at this. It's a completely different world today when it comes to obtaining a loan. But more importantly, the real danger is what happens to you if you already have a loan. What happens when it comes time for your loan to reset? That's what's causing the surge in bankruptcies and defaults. Your inability to obtain a new loan will have a slowing effect on the general economy, affecting GDP over like the mid to long term, but the immediate effect is for the existing floating rate loans that reset every six months or every year or whatever. If you're not familiar with the debt game, it's similar to an adjustable rate mortgage, right? Where every six months or a year or whatever, your interest rate resets to the current rate. And 
just think about that for a moment. Think about what happens if the last time your loan reset was last August. Look at what you'd be about to face, the difference in your monthly payments. Let's say you have a half a million dollar mortgage. Let's say that, all right? Let's, uh, let's choose an ARM 10 over six. That means that your rate's fixed for 10 years and it resets every six months thereafter. This is just an example for simplicity's sake, all right? So your current monthly payment is $2,100 based off of last August's interest rates. Then come next month, your interest rate would reset for the first time at the current rate. Ladies and gentlemen, your new monthly payment is $3,500. So your monthly mortgage payment just jumped by 75%. That's what people are dealing with right now. Today you're paying $2,100, tomorrow you're paying $3,500. That's, that's what's happening across the board right now for commercial real estate, corporate loans, and to a lesser extent the housing market because only like 7% of residential mortgages are adjustables. But the vast majority of commercial real estate has has a uh, has floating rate loans and pretty much all corporate loans have floating rates, many with balloon payments attached as well. So, so that's what's transpiring right now. And it's why you see companies filing chapter 11 right and left, all types of companies from all across the gambit. We're talking technology companies, healthcare companies, communications companies, transportation, manufacturing, you name it. Two days ago, Yellow announced their filing bankruptcy, that huge trucking company, You've definitely seen their trucks on the highway. They're like the third largest LTL company, and they employ around 30,000 people, folks. Take a look at this article. Yellow's senior vice president of sales informed her staff on Wednesday that their last day would be Friday. So two days, folks, two days notice, and the less than truckload carrier will file bankruptcy on Monday. Yellow is the third largest LTL company, less than truckload company, and employs some 30,000 workers including around 2,200 Teamster members. The trucking company had an operating revenue of $5.2 billion in 2022. That same sales manager went on to say previously in the day, their boss advised their team that a bankruptcy could happen at any time and to start sending out resumes. Look, that's brutal, folks. And it's happening much more than you hear about, mostly because companies aren't like these companies that are failing aren't huge businesses. They're mid-sized companies, right? With a thousand employees, 2000 employees. You don't hear about it often. Now, now why is this happening? What's going on? Well, I'm gonna show you. This is Yellow's last annual report for 2022. They list their contractual cash obligations, which includes their outstanding loans. Now look at this. At the time of this filing, they had $2 billion in outstanding debt, more or less. All right, one and a half billion was due within one to three years. But look what happened. At the time this report was filed, this number was one and a half billion dollars. All right, this number doubled, doubled overnight due to higher interest rates, which, which they can't afford, couldn't afford at all, not even close. Look at this, with rates where they were last year, all right, at 3%, 4%, wherever their rate was, they only cleared 12 mil in free cash flow. So that huge company, doing $5.2 billion in revenue only clears $12 million. Think of free cash flow as what's left over after paying all your expenses, including your loan payments. And for them, after all the company's expenses and their loan payments, only a 12 mil left over. Well, with their loans resetting this year, they can't survive, folks. And just like that, all right, 30,000 people out of a job. Now, something else I want to point out, that is just the impact caused by higher rates, assuming their loans reset like normal. But what if they don't? What if your bank decides to change the terms of your loan? Because they are, in a lot of cases, that's exactly what's happening, making the terms more favorable for themselves, for the bank. All right, this is all happening right now, folks. It's been happening for months, just barely gets talked about. But like I said six months ago, by the second half of this year, we're gonna start seeing financial media having to cover this a lot more. Bloomberg, for example, just, just did this piece warning about, wait for it, the coming sluice report. You know we love that survey here, by the way, right? For the record though, that senior loan officer survey is normally used as toilet paper, folks. Normally nobody watches it closely, but these are far from normal times. The sluice is hands down the most important survey the Fed does right now top of their dashboard and will continue to be until this cycle ends. Now it's supposed to be released around August 8th and I'm predicting, I'm predicting that the banks haven't tightened that much more than they did from Q1. I think we'll see that they tighten moderately more and the reason is because the Fed decided to hike again. If the banks 
had severely tightened lending conditions in Q2, I don't think we would have seen that quarter point hike last week. Listen to what Bloomberg has to say about this though, because they say something different. Wall Street braces for the great loan tightening. Upcoming Fed survey expected to show tighter lending standards. Citibank says shifting credit cycle could shave 2% off real GDP. Now, that's what we were talking about earlier, right? When banks tighten lending standards, it has a drastic effect on companies' ability to grow and to operate. It's not something that you see in real time though, right? It's like a silent economic killer. All right, they go on. The great credit tightening is finally approaching on both sides of the Atlantic. If the latest surveys of bankers are anything to go by, after delivering a fresh interest rate hike Wednesday, Federal Reserve Chair Jerome Powell signaled that Monday's senior loan officer opinion survey, which typically polls more than 80 lenders, will show tightening lending standards. Think restrictive monetary policy and bank turmoil for creating headaches for borrowers across the globe, from mom and pops to blue chip companies. All right, now listen to this part. Add new U.S. regulations, though, that would force big banks to hike their capital bill there are capital buffers by billions of dollars, and a case can be made now that the long-anticipated stiffening of lending conditions is finally playing out. New capital requirement rules with the biggest lenders having to boost their capital requirements by 19% are also a headache for Wall Street. And if you didn't watch our last video on this, I'll link it in the description below. We covered this in detail, all right? They go on, any knock to the economy from credit tightening would be clearly painful for the slew of companies that have built up a mountain of debt in the easy money years and are now facing soaring borrowing costs. In a note on Thursday by Oak Tree Capital Management, they warned their clients asset bubbles created during the easy money era could deflate painfully, causing a rash of downgrades, distress, and eventually defaults. Look, folks, these types of articles are beginning to pop up more and more, which is good because retail investors need to know what's coming. Look, the economy from the outside, most people probably see, see that the stock market continues to go up and assumes that everything's honky-dory. But folks, there's a lot of obstacles converging at the end of the year. I talked about this on Twitter uh, yesterday or this morning, I think yesterday. Look at this. Look at the year-to-date cross-asset returns for 2023 thus far. Look at the S&P 500, a 20% return. If you're still long the S&P, by the way, you may want to consider locking in some gains while you can. I'll leave you with this emphasized statement from Morgan Stanley's FOMC follow-up note. Here's what they write. Looking ahead, we expect to see significant slowing into the second half of 2023, with the cumulative effect of tighter monetary policy now building. All right, if you enjoyed this video, got something out of it, press the like button. If you didn't, that's all right too. Press the dislike button. Either way, I appreciate you watching.